So good evening everyone, welcome to the licensing meeting of Tamworth Murrock Borough Council. My name's Tracy Poynton and I'm from the Democratic Services Office. I'd like to remind members that the meeting is being recorded and uploaded to YouTube at a later date. Um, the chair of this committee has sent his apologies and as such, and as this is the first licensing meeting in this municipal year, we'll be voting for a vice chair for this committee later in the meeting. So I'd like to move to agenda item one, um, apologies. So we've received apologies from councillors Ben Price, Ben Clark, Sarah Daniels, Pat Pallet, Martin Summers and Jan Wadrop. Um, we haven't got any more apologies, that's the full um, people that are missing. Thank you. So agenda item two, uh, this is the minutes of the previous meeting held on the 28th of March 2024 and they're here for approval. Um, from the original, from the committee um, in March, we have Councillor Clark, Clements, and Councillor Wood. So, if I could ask for a mover and a seconder, so that's Councillor Wood <coughs> and Councillor Clements, and um, I'll ask the vice chair to sign those at a later date. Thank you. So then we move on for appointments of vice chair for this committee. Um, can I have a nomination? Are there any nominations, Councillor Wood? I'd like to nominate Councillor Margaret Clark, please. I've not got used to that. Is there a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Statham. Are there any other nominations for the Vice Chair? So can we move to the vote, please? All those in favour? Thank you. Nobody against and no abstentions. Thank you. So I'll hand over to Councillor Clark now. Um, to carry on chairing the meeting. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Thank you, Tracy. Evening, everybody. Um, item four, declarations of interest before we go further. Please, can I ask whether there are any interests to be de declared? Nope. Thank you. Right. Item five, taxi and private hire licensing policy review. Can I hand over to the officer of Required. Would you Thank you, Chair. Uh, my name's Sarah Gear. I'm the Senior Licensing Officer um, and Wendy Smith, Head of um, Environmental Health. Um, the Taxi and Private High Licensing Policy 2023 to 2028 became effective in April 2023. The policy is for a period of five years, however, officers committed to reviewing the policy after it had been in force for 12 months. A review of the policy commenced on the 9th of May 2024, and we invited all licensed drivers, vehicle proprietors and operators to comment. In addition, the review was sent to a citizen panel. Two responses to the review were received from the citizen panel, and these are attached to Appendix 1. Unfortunately, no responses were received from the trade. Attached to Appendix 2 are a matrix of changes that are proposed. These are very minor changes, taking into account the responses received and officers' recommendations. In addition to these, officers are also requesting that on page 127 of the reports pack, the breach of condition that reads failure to notify in writing the authority of a change of address within five working days is amended to include telephone number and email address notification. The recommendation before the committee today is that members note the responses received and approve the minor amendments proposed. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Questions, anybody? Right. Recommendations? Oh, I beg your pardon. Councillor Bain. The, um, the reduction of the timing from three months to two months, what's the rationale for that? We were finding with, um, especially the vehicle renewals, uh, we're trying to bring um, the tests, the compliance tests in line um, with the date of renewal and then in a six month time, because we were sending out the renewals three months uh, before the, the renewal date, they were renewing too early, and then all the compliance tests were being shifted out of line. 
Um, so by reducing that, it just helped us with the paperwork. So it was just a bureaucratic necessity. There's, there's no real advantage to it other than that, just to make the system cleaner. It just helps us keep on top of all the checks that we have to make to um, the vehicles and also the drivers. Mr Smith, please. Thanks for the report. Just got a question um, in regards to those amendments that were made. Um, how many of those would you have said were based on what was learned over the last 12 months or were there many or were they majority potentially of what of amendments that could have been done 12 months ago on the original report i think we were happy with the policy when it was originally um, brought in in april and it's only with working with the policy with the conditions, with the breaches, that we knew that they needed tweaking. Um, for example, um, we had a condition in there with regard to um, evidence of using a mobile phone as witnessed by officers. We've chosen to take the as witnessed by officers out because we do get reports of drivers using mobile phones but we can't take action on that because it's not being witnessed by an officer. So it's just little, it was little tweaks like that that we've learned during this last 12 months um, that we needed to make just to tighten things up a bit. Any further questions? Yes, Councillor Bain. Yeah, just a quickie, it's, it's about parking and waiting and you've deleted private hire, and I wondered what the reason for that was. How do you know that? Page 35. Uh, we've deleted private hire out of here because it would relate to both private hire and hackney carriage vehicles so it would, it would apply to all vehicles so we've just taken the reference to private hire vehicles out can you tell me about the differences between a hackney carriage and a private hire then say again sorry what are the differences between a hackney carriage and a private hire Hackney carriages can stand on the rank, um, private hires have to be pre-booked. Any further questions or comments, please? Councillor Clements. Having done this report many times now over the years, I think these these small tweaks that you've made, just, just clean it up. It, it makes more sense. Um, and, and I've read it that many times now. It, 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 just, it just makes it a tighter policy. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. I think we're exhausted. <clears throat> Can I have a mover and seconder to approve these minor amendments? Councillor Wood, move a seconder, please. Councillor Clements, thank you. <coughs> move to the vote, please. All those in favour.
Item 6, please. Gambling Act 2005, review of statement of principles. May I hand over to our relevant officer who will announce herself. Thank you, Chair. The Council is under duty to keep its statement of principles under review every three years. The statement of principles sets out the authority's approach when making decisions on applications that will apply to promote the licensing objectives set out in the Act. Attached to the report at Appendix 3 are a matrix of changes. There are no major changes to the draft statement of principles. In April 2023, the Government published a long-awaited white paper entitled High Stakes Gambling Reform for the D Digital Age. The white paper sets out the Government's plan for reform of gambling regulation. It's unclear at this stage what the timetable will be for any legislative reforms, especially now with the, government, with the change in Government. It is envisaged that we may do an interim change to the policy outside the statutory three-year cycle. The committee is asked to recommend that the draft statement of principles be approved for public consultation and brought back to the licensing committee. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Questions, please. So just to get this right, uh, this, we're doing this again to align with the government information. The Gambling Act Statement of Principles is on a three yearly cycle. So we have to um, cons go out to consult every three years on our Statement of Principles, whether there have been any changes or not. Um, and that's, that's nationally. Um, because the government released this white paper, um, we, we've been in consultation with other local authorities and the Gambling Commission to see whether we could hold off um, pending any, any changes that are coming because we're just going to have to do all this again. But the direction was that we, we have to do it at this point so that a new statement of principles becomes effective on the 31st of January 2025. Further question, Councillor? So, um, yeah, so we had one last year, didn't we? One year ago. No, it was two years ago. Apologies, two years. Um, did we know at that point that this white paper was due? There's always, there, there was um, a review of the Gambling Act, um, and that was undertaken in just bear with me i think i've referred to it in the in the report um review of the gambling act launched in december 2020 um so and then this white paper was um released in april 2023 um so this time round, we've got to do the consultations again by law, isn't it? Is that particularly expensive slash resource intensive? Because everything else is pretty much a copy and paste, isn't it? But the consultations have to happen again. Yeah, I'd pretty much say that the consultation is pretty much copy and paste what we did two years ago. Um, we've, we've got a set. We, we send the consultation papers all about out by email. Um, We've already got the list of consultees, albeit I think there are a couple of changes. Um, and then it's just collating those um, responses and reporting back to committee. Um, so it, it's something that is, you know, as part of our day-to-day -day role. Further questions? Hmm? Can I ask that if there is a change in the consultees, obviously that will come to committee and so on, and you don't visualise any at the moment, but it's a possibility. Um, there was a change in the trade associations, which is listed in the matrix of changes um, in the report. 
um, they'll, those will get added to the distribution list that we've got. But when it comes back to committee um, in October, I think is the next, um, that will be reported on who was consulted as part of the consultation process. Appendix 2, I'll get this sorted soon, <laughs> for the purpose of consultation with the relevant parties. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Uh, Councillor Bain moving, Councillor Clement seconding. Thank you very much, Councillors. Any further debate? Nope. Can I ask for a vote, please? Thank you. That concludes the business of this meeting. Uh, thank you, members. And may I close the meeting now at 6.16.